إني ألقى الإيناس في صومي وصلاتي ودعائي للرحمن وجميع الطاعات. If I ask you a question, do you believe in the theory of evolution? Like in its entirety? I think it. I think it probably has. I think it's still an evolving theory. I don't think it's concluded, so it's not a fact. But I think it's the best understanding that we have at the moment for how for how we reach. It's not. No, it's not. It's called the evolution. It's called, it's called the theory of evolution. So it's, it's, it, it is also. There is a lot of. Yeah. So I think you're onto something there's with that. There's a lot of evidence though that um, is very tangible with regards to the theory of evolution that we quite easily we bring forward to prove it to a so large. Evolutionists don't claim to have. Yes. The final answer. No. Yeah, yeah. But it they're making an effort to narrow the gap between knowing and not knowing. Whereas religions, for example, say this is facts already. Everyone else shut up. Okay. Now forget about religion for now, because we're just establishing something before religion, if you don't mind. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. it's interesting. The reason why I brought up the theory of evolution, I don't disagree with you that there are some evidences for some some phenomena in terms of evolution, like speciation, adaptation, things like that. You can actually, from a microbiological perspective, observe. Yeah. yeah. But what I'm saying is, the thesis, I'm being very specific here, the thesis that human beings had a common ancestor, which, uh, which was a primate, yeah? So, basically the fact that the Homo sapiens sapien, which is what we are, had a common ancestor, had a, a primate, like a primate, to what extent do you believe in this at this theory or this thesis or this idea? Like almost 100%. I've, I've seen, I've, almost been, 100%. I've actually visited the primate in Ethiopia yeah. in a museum and I've yeah, seen I'm the just, skeleton. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm wanting to know to what extent you believe it, yeah? Uh, believe, well, I, I saw so it, so I wouldn't say I believe it like as in like I'm just making from, believe. From I've actually of, seen it. Yeah, yeah, 99.9%. 99.9%. So 99. yeah, how, how about yourself? Yeah, like in the 90s, yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm happy that you said that because now I want to put in something else, yeah? Because the reason why I've, I brought up the theory of evolution is because we wanted to establish something called truth claims and your standards of truth. You said that you believe in the theory of evolution, whereas before you did admit that evolution is evol ev itself evolving, yeah? Evolving. In other words, that it's changing. That the theory itself, perceptually, is actually changing from one generation to the next. Yeah, but it's not changing, it's not changing, it's backwards. It's not going to be, oh, actually we, we were completely wrong and actually there's never been any evolution. Okay, okay. No, it's, it's only, it's only so, confirming itself and, thing, and parts, you know, the understanding of like the, uh, no. the tree of life. Is, is growing. It's not. It's not that we're redacting back to a point where. Okay. It's, I think you're. No, no, no. I don't know. I want to. I want to pick up on what you. Said. I want to pick up on you what you said. It's, it's interesting what you said. Yeah. Let me make my position clear first of all. Yeah. In terms of like the scientific realities, yeah, that we can observe around us, or what the uh, the scientific method has been able to has been able to basically pick up, and the Quranic discourse or the Islamic discourse, there is nothing that I can think of that goes against the Quranic discourse except for the theory of human evolution. So that's something which is scientific, but it goes against Islam. That's clear. It's yeah? pretty major. No, no, it's, it's for you it's major, right? Because you believe it's 99% true, isn't it? But what I'm saying is, there's something to this which I want to bring, what I want to flesh out right now, yeah? So you believe in the theory of evolution, but you I, mean, I didn't say I believed in, in the theory of revolution, so what evolution. Do you I said I believed in what I saw in terms of the primate, which actually yeah, proves, that's fine. proves from, a, yeah. from with a tangible, from a tangible perspective, oh, yeah. that evolution is actually very credible. I'm, very I'm, credible. I'm, I'm, I'm I want to get to the point. You My don't point. Want to use words like believe. believe is okay, a, so what, do you, what word you, would you like to use? Our current understanding yes. of how we are, how we are. Fine. Let me, let me use your exact terminology then. So according to you, our current understanding, Common. yeah, of but evolution is that we've evolved from a common ancestor which is a primate. We've evolved from a ma many yeah, yeah, common yeah. ancestors yeah, yeah. in many. But let's just be specific to Homo sapiens sapien, yeah? yeah? So the Homo sapiens sapien has come from another primitive ancestor, yeah? But here's my point, here's my question now, yeah? This is my question. You, you said beginning, in the in the beginning, right? That you do not deny the fact that evolution has evolved itself, the theory. Yeah, the theory is evolved. Yeah. So when we look at science in general, I want to make a point that when you look at science in general, 
if you look at something which is in the background of science called the philosophy of science, which is a very, very important part of science because philosophy of science actually sets the kind of framework of science. And when you have contributions like the one that has been made by Karl Popper and others, this actually sets the tone for the scientific method. So, for example, the scientific method itself, you could say, has, gone, has undergone a change. And the way we do science has got, undergone a change in the, in, the, in the hundreds of years. That's evolution as well. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we're all, we're all agreeing here. But that's no different to how uh, like a, a religious theory would work. You're, no, all, you're always, if you believe in something, you're always going to preach and yeah, no, no. talk but in a I'm way that backs about, up that. To be honest, my friend, I'm not talking about religion right now. I'm just talking about the theory of evolution and truth standards, yeah? I can talk about religion later on if you want. I but you. Yeah, but, but we'll start <laughs> with the theory of evolution. Because what, what we have just established, the two things we've established, yeah, which I, I feel are contradictory, if you don't mind me saying, yeah? The first thing we've said is that science is undergoing change, and we've all agreed to it. We have evidence of this, as Thomas Kuhn has mentioned in his book, The Paradigm Shift, that actually, every once in a while, science undergoes an incredible paradigm shift, which actually not only changes science, but it changes the framework with it through which science operates. And a good, an ample example of this is uh, the Newtonian theory moving to Einsteinian theory from 1900 to 1905, to such an extent that people have thought that Newtonian theory was the be-all and end-all, but in 1905 or 1906, when Einstein came out with the special theory of relativity, the whole world of science, in physics in particular, was turned upside on its head, basically. Do you see what I mean? So what I'm saying to you is that you've just said to me that science is 99%, or the theory of evolution in particular, human evolution, you believe it to an extent of 99%. My question is, how can you be so sure of something which you have admitted is changing? That's my question to you. I didn't say I was so sure. I said I was okay. in the 90s. Of, oh, in the 90s. Of what I saw. So yeah. actually, I didn't say the theory. All right, how about you? Are you, are you still 99% the, sure of it? The, the theory of our relationship to, as you called it, a primitive species of, like Answer prior that. to Homo sapiens. Yeah. That hasn't changed that much. Okay, that's a, that's, that's a point here. If you don't mind me coming back and, and, put, and offering you some, some interesting points. I say no, it has changed. And I'll give you the evidences. If you look at how evolution, or the theory of evolution in general, how that is actually formalized, it's formalized usually three, but using three different kinds of evidences. The first evidence is the fossil record. So it's a kind of archaeological evidence. Not, it's not in the man to ape. Because the fossil record isn't relevant because... No, no, they still use the fossil record. They use Lucy and they use other fossils that they have found and they've ex excavated and they and they mention those fossils and they try and link them together. So the fossil record is one oh, of the strongest so evidence. DNA. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. DNA. So, yeah, DNA, so an RNA, DNA and RNA, yeah. these are different things. So they look at how uh, animals are basically formulated in, in the wombs of other, uh, basically other animals in the genome. It's a bit more complex. But yeah, yeah, but they, they look at the this evidence, it's a so genetic component. Number three, uh, they also look at they, there's another third one which I forgot actually. The point is they, it's material evidence. Some of these material evidences. These multiple. Yeah. The major I would say one of the major things that the, the, the evolutionists rely upon is the fossil record. Now if you look at what has been discovered by the fossil record, you realize that there's a massive shift. So in other words, as you've mentioned correctly, whenever they find a new fossil basically, they re-render re the, the theory. They re Basically, the theory is reshuffled. They, they, they question aspects of it. They don't reshuffle the entire theory. They okay, but hold on. If we look at the discipline biology, yeah, as uh, uh, in a broad way, would realize actually that there are, there are people, there are biologists that basically, like Gold, Stephen Gold, who wrote a book or wrote a, an essay called The Punctuated Equilibrium. Punctuated Equilibrium, he reshuffled the whole theory completely. What he said, Gold, is that instead of a he, he, he basically what he said in his essay was a revolutionizing of neo-Darwinian evolution. What he said was in, instead of like a slow gradual change of uh, basically one species moving into another species etc. What you find is that there is a sudden change and he calls it punctuated equilibrium that, that happens because uh, basically of speciation or, or, or something like a sudden shift, a climate change or something that happens. So in other words, his idea is that uh, his idea of evolution is different to the, the standard neo-Darwinian evolutionary, uh, evolutionary idea that's propounded by people like Richard Dawkins. So 
Pardon? Yes, come. Yeah, so this. Yeah, okay. So, the, but so what gold is saying in punctuated equilibrium, it's not. It doesn't fit. It does not. I'm not saying it doesn't fit. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying. Let me be clear. Exactly. So no, but what's your name, my friend? What's your name, my friend? Reese. Reese. Well, I want to be clear. Yeah? I'm not saying that he's against evolution. I didn't say that. I said that his understanding of evolution does not follow the, 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 the narrative set by the majority of neo darwinian evolutions. And that's why there had been papers that had been published between... It's too simple. Pardon? It's too simple. What is it? Had a more complicated evolution than that. Yeah, what? Well, but are you, are you, are you following? Same. Yeah, well, you, I'm not saying that. But you're Listen, saying, I'm you're saying, saying yeah, can, 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 by the way, can I, can, I, can I tell you something? Yeah? There's a difference between the theory of evolution as posited by Charles Darwin in The Origins of Species and the theory of evolution, which now has to take into consideration the, the new bi biological elements in microbiology. So basically, the transformation from Darwinian evolution to to the uh, to the uh, post 1960s era is called neo darwinian even so now they've changed it to so what i'm saying is that so the, the, the change from Darwin's theory, there's been already a change. So you've got one change from Darwin yeah. to the neo-Darwinian evolutionary, uh, basically, model, which relies more on microbiology. And now I'm saying within this neo-Darwinian uh, theory, you have different people now questioning the validity of neo-Darwinian evolution like gold. Yeah. So, so clearly, pardon? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so this now here's my here's my here's the ultimate question. Here's my ultimate. Question. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I, by the way, I didn't disagree with you there. I agree with you completely. But what I'm going to say to you, this is my this is my uh, basically my ultimate question to you. If we know that the theory of evolution is changing, one, yeah, uh, we we can document the change in the theory of evolution, or we can even we can document the evolution, ironically, in the evolutionary theory. And we know that there have been rogue opinions or different opinions within the framework of neo-Darwinian evolution. And we know that the fossil record is a big part of the, basically, uh, the biologists coming to his conclusion. And we know that every once in a while, the fossil record, there's new information that is presented, which means that the neo-Darwinian evolutionary theory has to be reshuffled. If we know all of these things, my question is as follows, yeah? How do we not know and this is my question. Actually, let me make it a different question. Can we say that there will not be a series of evidences, yes, fossil records or otherwise, that will not discount what we know already of human evolution? Can we say that for sure, 100%? No. Can we not say that? No. So you agree with me then, yeah? Yeah, but, that, on that point maybe. but that's why I said 99.9%. .9%. Thank you very much. So this arbitrary number of 99.9% .9 is... No, I'll tell you why it's arbitrary. Because you're, the reason why it's up, can I tell you, sorry, and, and this is not to put you down, my friend, because I know you're an intelligent person, and you're an intelligent person as well, and you're a third intelligent person. But the problem is this, is that when you are stuck in a sociological, yes, snapshotted, basically, part of history, you have one idea of how science works. So, for example, if we rewind 600 years ago, geocentric, no, excuse me, but, but if you look at the, 600 years ago, the, the geocentric model was such... Uh, basically, it was so uh, embedded and entrenched in people's minds and hearts, they couldn't even imagine heliocentricity, yeah? So if, if, if you ask someone 600 years ago, what do you think of heliocentricity, and do you think that geocentricity is true, and that uh, there's a chance of it being changed into a heliocentric kind of model by people, and that will be accepted, they'll say probably 99% no. Why? Because they can't conceptualize it. Just because someone can't conceptualize what's something. What's the difference between... Oh, I can't say that because you don't want to go to religion, but what's the difference between that and, your, like the, say, the doctrine of Islam being created 1,600 years ago? By the way, this... What, what's to say that that snapshot wasn't completely... No, no, what I'm saying is that, look, religion, put it to the side for now, because this discussion is about evolution. Well, but, no, no, it's not, because but the I'll, theory I'll of evolution... Question. No, no, I'll wait, wait, question. Wait, the theory of evolution, you just said, yeah. is the only thing that the Quran potentially doesn't agree with. No, in terms of the scientific method, yeah. as, as far as my research has gone, I've looked at basically the, the, exegesi the exegesical works of all of the... Uh, basically, I've looked at all of the, the Quranic uh, ayat or the verses that reference science, yeah? I've looked at them, and I've looked at the exegesical works of all of those verses. 
and I looked and I, and I can say something quite confident that almost all of the theories that we believe in today or, or basically most of the science that we know of today yeah does not even contradict not to the Quran but even the old what the old scholars said so a thousand three hundred and fifty years ago what those scholars had said about for example the cosmos there is always going to be something in that exegetical work which corresponds to, t to today's reality. That, that with the exception of, human. with the exception of human evolution, yeah. which is why I'm taking an issue with human evolution, because I see there's no way of reconciling between human evolution and the Quranic narrative. Yeah. So that's my honest assessment. If I said to you this, because uh, if I was a flimsy individual that could just uh, create parallels with everything, I would have said to you, look, the truth is, we don't have any problem with any science. Yeah? So what's the percentage that you believe that the theory of human evolution could be correct? Zero percent. And now I you know, need to tell me why. No, 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 I'll tell you why. The reason why is as follows. Yeah? I, I'll be impressed if you can. Pardon? I don't think it can be, that's the whole point of science. No, 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 look, uh, from a science, if I was an, a non-religious person with no other epistemological and ontological world, uh, uh, epistemological ontological thing informing my worldview, then I could say what you're saying. I could say, you know what? But you I would could be, be religious I would, and believe in I would be more at the same time. But uh, let me just finish okay. what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. I would be more. I would be more liberal. I would say maybe about fifty percent. I'd be more agnostic about it, to be honest. If I was I we are epistemological, yeah. where we don't have definitive. Facts no, no, but I'm with you. But if I was epistemologically and ontologically yes. informed in the, in a different way to Islam, I would be more agnostic about it, knowing what I know about the philosophy of science. But since I am epistemologically and ontologically informed by Islam, which is a religion which claims to be the ultimate truth from a God who is all wise and all knowing. And it's clear in, in the revelation which I believe has been sent down from God that human evolution is, is, is not true, basically. Then from that angle, from a probabilistic theory, uh, from a probabilistic perspective, I think to myself, since he's saying this, then I have to agree with this. You see what I mean? So my epistemology is informed by the Quranic discourse. Okay, so give us that information. What information? The, the part of the Quran that disproves human evolution. So for example, there's many verses. Chapter number four, verse number one. Ya ayyuhun nasu taqhu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahida wa khalaqa minha zawjaha wa batha minhum a rijalan kathira wa nisa'a wa taqhu allaha alladhi tisa'aluna bihi wal arham inna allaha kena alaykum raqiba. For example, that O oh, oh humankind, uh, fear God who has created you from one soul and created from it its partner. From one soul is, is, is implying, an, uh, is implying, sorry, a direct, so God created the first human being directly. Can I ask you two direct questions, yeah? Have you been exposed to the discourse or the evidence base which aims to prove or a way in which Islam aims to prove itself? Have you been, ex have you been exposed to that at all? No. Yes. Alright, so you basically, or he has, but you haven't. So I'm just speaking to you now or will. Basically because you haven't, so what you're missing here is that the fact that Muslims do not just believe in their religion because the book says so. There is a, basically, the, is the Quran and Islam by extension has a mechanism. But you just said well, yourself that can, if, you remove, can I, can I if you, you remove human evolution, no, but then therefore the Quran is, cannot, the, the two can't work together. What? Human evolution and the Quran? Yeah. Yeah, I've said that. But I, I, that's nothing to do with what I'm saying now. I'm saying that the Quran itself has a mechanism by which and through which it aims to prove itself. If you have a certain standard of truth, you can either accept this mechanism or accept the arguments that are proposed or reject it. And that's part of free will and having your own ability to do whatever you want to do. Absolutely. So, what, what I, I think the reason why I feel like you're straw man, you're basically a straw man of my of opinion, you're straw manning my opinion is because you're, what you're saying is, uh, it's different to believe in the theory of evolution, which has evidence based and, uh, and records and fossil records, than to believe in religion, which doesn't have that. What I'm saying is, and this is not. But we can only, have this conversation afterwards. No, no, we can have this conversation. I can expose you to the arguments uh, that I've made over and over again in this week's corner. That Islam itself has a mechanism or has a way by which and through which it aims to prove itself. Do you understand? Which so is. I'll tell you later. All right, we'll come to that. We'll put that as like a little, like you know, put it in a NB. footnote. Oh yeah, we'll come back to it because I want to finish off this discussion. What I want to say to you now, for someone that says 99, you said in the beginning of this discussion that you believe in the theory of human evolution to a degree of 99.9%. .9%. You left a 0.1% there. 
Maybe because because of the, 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 the things that we've talked about before. But because I wanna, it's open to yeah, So I want to ask you a direct question. Is it possible for you to hear claim that the theory, based on the fact that because of the problem of induction, because of the fact that you can't have all of the, the access to all of the fossil records, because of the fact that you cannot you cannot obtain this, it's an impossible thing to obtain, and because of the fact we know that science is changing, like paradigm shift. Based on these two realities, can you say that the theory of evolution is an absolute certain truth? Human evolution. Uh, I, see, that's that's that. Basically, what you're doing is you're creating a question which is almost impossible for me to ask because you're in a win-win situation where you basically no, but go. It's, uh, no, no, but that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but it's, 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 no, 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 pretty concrete but is open to change. Thank you very, very much. Yeah. I will actually conclude with that because what I feel is happening, and I'll say to you this here, everyone here, I want the atheists in particular, or agnos or people from a non-Islamic uh, viewpoint, to, to basically know something, yeah? Let me address this directly, yeah? Looking at the cameras. I want, I want you guys to know something. Science is meant to be something that is meant to humble you. Because science is a way to try and understand the natural environment around you. Science is not something you're meant to be completely certain about because science, by the scientific method in and of itself, doesn't attempt to actually bring philosophical certainty to a human being. It, it attempts to bring theories which you can run by for the present time and present moment. But science in general, unfortunately, it doesn't give you the grounding, it doesn't give you the ability to say that actually what we have today is true. And what, when you look at, and by the way, Thomas Kuhn is an interesting person who wrote about this in a book called Paradigm Shift. When you look at the history of the world, this becomes patently clear. If you look at the, the, the shift, as we said, from Newtonian physics to Einsteinian physics as an example, from the geocentric model to the heliocentric model as a secondary example, from the static state theory to the Big Bang as a third example. These are actual examples where people were so sure, as sure as we live today, that those models, i.e. geocentricity, the static state, and what's the other one that I mentioned? The other one that I mentioned. That, the, 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 the Newtonian theory of relativity, that these were actual truths absolute truths that you cannot change. What I'm saying to you is that then, that's not what science says, it's not what science can prove, therefore be humble about science. For the atheist now, evolution has become his, his main bullet, his main uh, ammunition. It's an unfortunate reality that your main thing that you're trying to prove as an atheist is something which is not a certain truth according to so the philosophy were, who of are you science. To and it's, I, we're not talking. About I'm not talking to you. Yeah. Agnostic atheist, or let's just say atheist in particular, apply a secondary double standard. Do you know what that is? They say that as a theist, as theists, we have to provide evidences that are that satisfy a certain value uh, truth standard. We have to we have to put forward evidences that satisfy a certain truth standard to prove God. However, what they have been able not to provide is the same kind of evidences for evolution, or human evolution in particular. Therefore, there is a double standard in the way they're applying their logic. But I think this goes back to our conversation Thank earlier you. about the fact that whether or not you could prove human evolution, it still doesn't then, like, let's say that they prove that human evolution, as we understand it today, was completely wrong. That still doesn't give any evidence towards a religion. All okay, it does no, is no, disprove I, no, I agree with you. our scientific no, no, theory. No, no, I do agree with you. So what's the, no, no. I don't know so, what you're trying to prove no, by no, saying no, that our theory, no, no, if our no, theory is no, incorrect, no, we'll just no, get no, all no, the evidence. No, 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 we no, 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 and then you had another, uh, you had another fossil which was discovered later on. And we've done DNA that matches us with yeah, no, no, Hold on, I'm, I'm asking you. By the way, you're saying we're 99% uh, similar to apes. We're 
similar to uh, chickens. These things have yeah, and, nothing, and, and they're neither here nor there. And 8% to fish. Oh, okay, so the point is, do we look, like, chicken? Do the we look like a chicken? To, I mean, do we look 50% similar to a chicken? I mean, the point is really, these, that's this, not how evolution works. You've just discredited the entire idea of evolution by saying that if a chicken is 50% us, we should have one wing. And a tail, you know, no, or, no, I'm not or like you know, a cockerel thing. No. That isn't how evolution okay, fine. works. Okay, fine. Well, I'm not saying. I'm, like, I'm not saying that. What you, I'm saying you can't is, belittle science no, 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 to okay, make okay, you fine. Point. I'm not. No, no, no. I'm just saying. That by using flowers. percentages strategically, it doesn't help your argument. If you remove, so that's what my point was. Two percent of DNA from a human. We the point, because you can use tr- you can use percentages strategically, yeah, to make an argument like they do in America when they say when they talk about you know the black people being unemployed and this kind of thing and uh, and when really you think about oh black people are x y z sociologically if you look at the statistic like for like you realize there's something fishy about the statistic for example was thomas sauer one of the black academics in, in america Any he looked at he they were saying they were talking about black people not being employed yeah in america and they said that if you look at it, black people are, are x amount of time more likely not to be employed when you look at it for like for like, so the black person now has got a parent who goes to university and the white person has got a parent who goes to university, the, the black person is more likely to have an education or to have a good education than the white person or it's a very similar amount. So in other words, statistics and numbers can be manipulated by individuals. This individual, so I'm not saying that you've done that. I'm saying that some individuals do manipulate this whole thing about 99% of, uh, we are 99% similar to, uh, to eight. What I'm saying is that I can say that we're 49% similar to chickens. It doesn't actually have any meaning. Unless you are able to show... It does. It has... Unfortunately. By the way, by the way, it doesn't doesn't necessitate that. Logically, it doesn't... Just because you're similar to something, it doesn't mean that you've been... Just because you're similar to something, it doesn't necessarily follow that you've been... You are uh, you're an extension of, of it. You're an, yeah, a part of the evolution. Oh, okay. so, 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 then, so then the conclusion is, is that everything is created. It doesn't actually follow. Yeah. By the way, there's a leap of faith. Is that, that what you're saying? What I'm saying everything is everything that was created at the same time in kind no, no, of the same I'm way, not from the same material. What I'm saying for sure, no doubt, is that that we believe as Muslims that that's true of human beings. And by the way, there is there's a logical component to this, and I'm not making the case for. Uh, basically, I'm not trying to, di- once again, I'm not trying to disprove necessarily human evolution. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to show you... It's proving Islam, though. No, no, no. Pardon? It's in Islam, human evolution. Yeah, no, I'm talking, you talked about like, speciation, adaptation, it's fine, but not from not the fact, not the fact that uh, no, uh, yeah, a primitive is another, yeah. So the point is, what I wanted to say to you was that as it relates to human evolution now, if we talk about what we believe in. We believe that a human being, in the Quran says, لَقَدْ حَرَّمْنَا بني آدم. We have certainly dignified the ch- child of Adam. The human being is, in many, many ways, completely different from the rest of the animal kingdom. We believe that's true from a philosophical perspective, from a moral your philosophy. Pers- right, your can I just finish your point? Your philosophy is... If you, if, you don't mind me, if you don't mind me just finishing... We reason, let's Let me just... We reason. No, no, no. I'm just, I'm just finishing, up, finishing what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that human beings are able to. Human, no, no, but can I just? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't say I don't care. No, they care. You but let me just finish what I'm saying. Can you reason with an animal? Do you, do you, do you mind if? No, no, no human beings don't reason with animals. Just, 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 just let me finish. I mean, we bro, bro, stop, for please. You're, you're going to disturb the, the, the flow of discussion. You've got hold of the wrong end of the stick. You've slow down. You've got hold of the wrong end of the stick. Yeah. I mean, we don't reason. All right. So let me just. Let me just. We reason. I said, what I meant was. You know what? I'll explain why. What we're saying what is... What I meant was, people don't reason with animals. Oh, that's fair enough. No, okay. That's why you're slow down. Slow down. I'm not even sure about that. that. So so what we're saying is, is that human beings yeah, have differences. I mean, you're, no one's going to refute me here. Human beings have civilizations. Animals don't have civilizations. Refute me. Human they beings... Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. Civilization. That, that is only based on the theory that you think that every animal is trying to evolve to become a human. No, no, no. I'm not going to say that. Well, what, I didn't say because that. Because you're saying that the, the height of evolution no, 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 is, I, I is human civilization. I, I didn't that's make not, true. By the way, by the way... Of course, as evolved as a human, no, but it's just evolved in a different no, way. No, 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 hold on, hold on. Hold on. Yeah. So, uh, excuse me, do you mind if I The fact that we have a civilization is just a byproduct of evolution. Because I was making a... You stopped me in the in the middle of what I was saying. Because what I was saying was that human beings have civilization. Animals don't have civilization. Not true. Human beings have a higher level of intelligence than every other animal. That's point two. What is Human th- beings have an ability to make conscientious moral decisions that affect them and the animal kingdom. So do, so do animals. 
Okay, that's your opinion. Which animal? I don't. Which animal? What? Animals don't make One decisions second. based on what's best what's for the morals? Next? Which animal? Well, hang on, hang on. The monkeys right. they they Hang on a minute. What he says is right, but he finished by saying the human being's decision affects the animals. But it, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, he, he's possibly going to close that by saying the animal's decisions don't affect us. Oh, well, yeah, I'll, I'll agree with that. Yeah. All right, yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're in control. Yeah. There is no doubt. We're in control now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the point is, my friend, is that there is no doubt that there are clear distinctions between human beings but that is a byproduct that, no, no, is, that isn't that isn't a reason if you don't mind me if you don't mind me ask, just finishing off what i was saying and actually actually i will say something else there are clear distinctions between the human being and the rest of the animal kingdom not only are these distinctions pronounced and clear for everyone to see and experience but there are also distinctions which mean and listen to this carefully which mean really that it becomes very very difficult for someone who's an evolutionist to contend by the way, that humans needed all of this. Wait a minute, what do, I, what do I mean here? The theory of evolution contends that the things that we develop or evolve are the things which are required for the survival of the, of the human being. I'm asking a question. Why do we, all of the things I've just mentioned, the majority of them, they are not contingent. You don't need them for survival, you don't. You do not need morality for survival. You can be the biggest immoral oh, well, person. But that's just. Oh, well, well, well. You don't need to be a moral you're person. Immoral in, 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 yeah. You mean if you live alone? If you're in a community, in a society, and you carry out certain immoral actions dependent on the view of the society, you'll get yourself killed. Not necessarily. No, no, I'm not talking about no, 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 it's Jamal. Well, because if, 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 you if, if, if there are plenty of immoral people who live yeah, yeah, yeah. a full life, yeah, exactly. listen, listen, I'll say it again. Morality, the, 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 the idea that, okay, I'm going to be good, good, good to my mum, that I'm not going to have sexual intercourse with my uh, sister. Excuse me, let me just finish. Do you mind if I just finish the point? The idea that the idea that I'm I'm going to be good to my my parents, that I'm not going to do certain bad things. that you will be killed. Yeah, exactly. So I think me and you are on the same page here. You will. The point is, Everyone who, can, everyone who does something immoral dies. You don't, need, you, don't need, you don't need morality for survival. There are certain moral acts that you but, do that affect the community. Yeah, yeah, but to, you don't need it for survival from a biological eat, perspective. That's, 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 you, you that's just community-driven rules. Oh, no, and we're yes, not talking no. about Islam. We're talking you about, that. my friend, we're talking about the biological perspective. From a, biologi from a clearly scientific, purely scientific perspective, you do not need morality yeah, in order to survive. Okay. Now, what I'm saying, agree. you agree with that? No, yeah? no, agree. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You don't, you don't need it. You don't need, you don't need a lot of the things that we have, the ability to to make poetry. What, the, what, what do you? How's that going to help you survive? It doesn't help you survive. No. You don't need any of those things in order to, the ability to write a play, the ability, ability to think about philosophy deeply, the ability to think about what we're thinking about right now. These intellectual things that that we have as human beings, we don't need them. In order to survive, the point really you need is that fitness, maybe. Yeah, yeah fitness, fitness. And that kind of. The point is then. So why do they exist in us? Do you see what I mean? So here we have a clear distinction between the human being and the rest of the animal kingdom. Such a clear distinction that it almost requires no. Not if you count. Evidence. Not if you count ourselves as animals. Well, if, if we yeah, are, if we are just an animal, no, but, uh, like yeah, a, yeah, I can see what you're saying. Yeah. A more, yeah, yeah, yeah. A more evolved no, 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 version no, no, of right. animals. You're right. Yeah. Then, yeah, but our brains are only yeah. capable of doing. That, that's the point. That's, that's, 